It's hot. Shout out where you're from. Where else? Local San Diego. Good. Where else? 
Minnesota, Virginia. Uh, who traveled the furthest to get here? Can anyone beat Virginia? New Jersey. Japan. Oh, well, welcome yeah. down here. <laughs> when you compare the zoo to your local zoos, even uh, Japan, Japan has some wonderful zoos, by the way, uh, you probably notice that these animals are a little bit easier to see. Usually when you go to see the giraffe or inside the giraffe house, they're shrouded on all sides with walls. Yesterday, <laughs> and we got mom, here's the other female, and this is my baby, never find my father, where is your father, where is your father, <laughs> well, he's hiding, he's back behind the wall here, he's, he's uh, with a male, <laughs> look like a giraffe puppet jumping back there, <laughs> those are the giraffe, on the horns, notice he was pushing this male, who was down in the trough, out of the way, away from the females, he really is establishing his a group in his territory in here, and, and, and she doesn't seem to care. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Bach, and, and, and then, because history, unfortunately, it would have been written down oftentimes as a very gender one. Sun, big horn sheep, the horns in his head take six to twelve years to grow out of that size, and they weigh more than the rest of the bones in his body combined. But the horn hog from the Lion King cartoon. See it? Uh, this uh, horn hog has bumps on its face. Uh, that's how I got her name, horn hog, but it's not really horn at all. Actually, actually, it's made out of a cartilage. Uh, it's used for one thing, it protects their face when they fight. When the warthog gets angry, they will uh, back up and then charge about, uh, you know, they back up four or five feet and they charge as fast as they can. The bumps in their faces keep their sinuses from caving in on impact. And, and <laughs> I think the warthog and Jean Claude Van Damme were the only animals stupid enough to fight with your face. <laughs> like it's supposed to hurt the other guy less than it hurts you. And <laughs> there he is, the warthog. It's carnivore from Madagascar. On the right hand side, we've got uh, the caracal cat right here on the branches. It's a caracal and a blue heart. On the right hand side, the gray headed tabers. By the way, when he came to the San Diego Zoo, this is one of the smartest cats. I love to watch this cat in my life. And this good cat is a very smart hunter. They go for the easiest kill they can find, they go for the smallest, sickest, or youngest close stock they can get hold of. They usually don't go for human beings because they're just a lot of work. But uh, they are also very, very territorial. So if you're out in the wild, uh, they don't want you in their area, and they don't want you. <laughs> they don't want to attack you. They do something to you that's almost more frightening than just attacking you outright. They'll come in behind you, four feet behind you. And they walk in step, pacing with you. It's in the work. The lionesses, they are the ones that are going out and they do the hunting and the killing. Uh, they uh, make a kill, they drag the carcass all the way back to the male, then he wakes up and insists that he eats first. They have the nerve to call him king of the jungle. Even more of a ridiculous title, because they are nowhere near the jungle. They're from the dry, grassiest regions of Africa. There is one third the size of this bear. Ask an Alaskan Peninsula brown bear. They said how the Kodiak bear was the biggest bear. Well, it's a member of the Kodiak family. You know the polar bears? They average at around 900 pounds. These average at 1,100 to 1,400 pounds. And they're the only exception to our number one rule. The number one rule of the San Diego Zoo is that we are not a circus. We're not here to make money off the animals. We're a non-profit organization. And of course, it's reflected in my paycheck. Towards us, hopefully she will not spray. And she's probably going to mark the wall to let us know. Oh, look, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Now people ask, why do rhinos do that when you approach? Why, they, why does she do that like that? All rhinos have one thing in common. Bad eyesight. Everything to a rhino is a blur. And because of that, they get scared. When a rhinoceros is scared, they will charge anything at about 13 miles an hour, weighing one and a half to three tons. That's a lot of animals to be moving at that speed. Uh, these are the African rhinos. The African rhinos have two horns. The Indian rhinos only have one horn. But and they take the more aggressive male bulls. Those are up at the wild animal park. Have the little palm front here. Uh, these are uh, the smaller ear and the larger head. You know, uh, as opposed to the African elephant, which have a large ear and a small head, kind of like a And this uh, elephant here is <laughs> using it as a fan. That was kind of cute. So here it give off their own extremely low frequency infrasound for attracting each other and for warning of danger. Now we did not know this until very recently. Our keepers used to have to walk them into the back area to take care of them every day. But now that we know they hear so well, instead they stand at the end of the enclosure holding food high up in the air while blowing dog whistles.
We heard a noise. What's he doing? He's laying on that log. exhibit for her bedroom or backyard. Please don't climb the railings anytime she chooses. Now this afternoon she'll be locked on exhibit and our mail panel she she will have the same option besides the China. Please don't obviously open 16 in China. Please don't Now, if you're really lucky, Poncho will blow back in your face. 
And you definitely want to take that as a compliment, because if he does that to you, he's treating you just like another llama by saying hello right back at you. And by the same token, if you don't want Pancho to stop and say hello to you, just let Ginger know she'll continue on her way. You don't want Pancho to come out here and invade anyone's face or make anyone feel uncomfortable. Just blow gently into the nose. This is a segment that we leave entirely up to Pancho. We let him pick and choose who he wants to stop and say hello to. So don't take him personally if Pancho stops at your neighbor, but he will ignore you. So that, don't take him the wrong way. Gently into the nose. Yeah, usually the further you shy back away from him, the more he comes at you. So they've also been used as a food source. They've been used, their wool has been used to make blankets and sweaters. And also some people have actually dried the droppings of lava and used it for a fuel source to build a fire. So lava has had quite a variety of uses for man. Lava is a very popular here in the States in our uh, national parks. this side, you can see better. Llamas are being Perfect, used because they have a very soft pad on the bottom of their feet. They don't dig up hey, the tree, but they go across. <laughs> They're certainly popular in our national parks for people that go out backpacking. Back How many of you out there have heard of an animal by the name of a binturong? There may be one or two of you out there that know what's coming out, but for a lot of you, this will be a brand new animal you'll be introduced to here this afternoon. I think she's making her way out here on stage right now. Her name is Shemao, born here at the San Diego Zoo, kind of taking her time, very set-oriented animal. And this is Shemal, our Binturong. Here she comes. She was coming out great guns, and I stopped and fed her, and she just thought, well, I'll just sit here for a while. <laughs> Let's get you all the way out here, sweetheart. I want you guys to get a good look at her, Shemal. Come on, sweetie. She was kind of doing this yesterday. Lots of smells on stage that uh, she was stopping to check out. If you get a good look at her here, can we touch our nose to the fist like we're trained? Just pretend. Okay, right here. As you get a good look at her, you can kind of see that she looks like she was put together by a committee. Very interesting, unique looking animals. But uh, all those various body parts are what makes her so very well suited for living in the trees. As we make our way over to our, quickly, to our <laughs> fresh, I mean our uh, rainforest trees over here, she's going to make her way up the tree. And you'll notice how agile she is. She has thickly padded feet for gripping these branches. And she has a prehensile tail. Now, as she's climbing, you'll notice that she kind of has her tail. She's dragging it along, always has it kind of in position, but is not really using it until she needs it. It's basically a security blanket for her when she's climbing. And when you spend so much time in the trees, it's a nice uh, appendage to have available to you. Now, these, <laughs> yeah, love those oranges. Get that juice running down the throat. Yes, Sarik, come on down. These guys have a couple of nicknames. They're often called banana bears, but more often they're called bear cats. Now, you can see some cat-like features with Shemal's face. She's got the whiskers and the tufted ears. She also makes a lot of cat-like vocalizations, but we're going to have her demonstrate for you where the bear part of her nickname comes from. Instant black bear, right there. Girl, oh, thank you. Our Binturong has a unique adaptation that allows her to run face first out of this tree. What she can do is actually rotate her rear angles about 180 degrees. That way, she does, you know, she doesn't have to have someone coming, coming up after her to rescue her, or she doesn't have to leap out of the tree. She can run face first. Are you ready? Down. Show these folks how it's done. There she goes. Look at that. She turns the angle. She uses the tail, and she makes a very speedy exit out of the tree towards me. <laughs> Being yesterday, we gave him several opportunities to come out and be very successful, and uh, he chose to sniff around and not pay attention. So hopefully we can kick it in gear and pay a little better attention. Very good. Now, first thing that we're going to ask this little guy to do is go for a little swim right here in the front moat. Now I'm going to toss a little pieces of food up and down the moat for him. I'd like you to notice how he makes his way to the food. And Otto will use their rear feet to propel himself through the water. He'll use her tail as a rudder. Otters can swim about seven miles per hour, and it can hold their breath under the water for about four minutes. So they're perfectly adapted for life on land, as well as living in the water. Now, otters are very successful hunters in the wild, which means that they have a little bit of time just to fool around. Hey there, kid. Thank you, onto the rocks. All the way across. Show them a big otter, slide. Come on, let's try this again. Right back onto the rocks. You're having some fun, hit it. Very nice. Yeah, you can applaud for him. I think we may have her on her back now. Thank you. Now he has to stay in the water till I call him out by name. That's part of the control.
control parameters that we work him on. The reason being, because we spent the first year of our training getting around the audience side, as well as many hours chasing him up and down the hillside over here. <laughs> so the main thing that we ask him to do when he's out here on stage is just pay really close attention. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and push the envelope really far this time. I'm going to ask him to go ahead and do a particular behavior that he sometimes fools around on. No? And that is this. Oh, that's very good. That's very nice. Make me out to be a liar every time on that one. I'll be very happy. Uh, he has gotten into a little bit of a deal where actually when we point him into the shavings here, he'll go and start sniffing the stage. That time I pointed him into the shavings, he went right in. So I'm going to go ahead and really reinforce him and let him know that's exactly what we like to see him do every single time that we point him into the shavings. And hopefully he'll never, ever, ever forget. And well, you know what we're going to also do? I'm going to go ahead and ask Mike if he wouldn't mind getting some more food for Kasut. And we're going to do a couple A to Bs back and forth with this little guy. We like to mix up the way that we ask him to come off and on stage. And uh, that one particular first time that we tried it, he was kind of on otter pilot. So what we're going to do is send him back, have Mike give him a little reinforcement, and then have him come back out to me. You may leave. Okay, now he's going to go uh, Moving to Africa, and we're bringing up the world's fastest land mammal. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, a cheetah. We have two cheetahs here at the Hunt Amphitheater, and they, they are the only cheetahs at the zoo. All of the rest of the cheetahs from our collection are at the Wild Animal Park in our breeding facility, and uh, we've had a lot of success with that up there. I'll tell you a little more about that in a few minutes, but uh, first we'd like you to meet Toby. He'll be making out his way out here, and easy for me to say, in just a second. He's four years old. We've had him since he was six months old, and uh, we've had him and uh, his roommate, Kimbunga, and here he comes. I didn't see the cheat on the unleash for a second there. <laughs> here he is. This is our very handsome boy. Whoops. I don't watch where you're walking there. Kind of missed a step. Now, um, Choby, as I mentioned, is four years old. Beautiful cat, isn't he? Uh, they are definitely built for life in the fast lane. How many, who knows how fast a cheetah can run? 60 to 70 miles an hour. That's it exactly. They can maintain that speed for about a quarter of a mile, and uh, they can go from zero to 42 seconds flat. I personally think that's quite impressive because my car won't even do that. You're just kind of being a little bit of a klutz today there, Joby. Keeps missing steps and missing the stump. And, um, the, the way they're able to attain those speeds are basically a complete change in body style. They have become long and lean. They've got uh, a nice stiff rudder-like tail, very small bullet-shaped head with small ears, and, and cat-like. Their, their claws are semi-retractable. That means they go partway in, but they're always at least partway out, and that keeps them blunt, and they can act like running cleats when they're running. So um, they're no longer really able to defend themselves with their kills because they're no longer strong and stocky like other cats. They don't have those big, powerful skulls and, and jaws, and they don't have those slashing, razor-sharp claws for tools. So for weapons, I should say. Um, so their, their, their basic uh, plan is to just stay out of the way. What they will do is hunt during the heat of the day when every uh, lion, leopard, hyena, and you know, their, their, their main competition who they would have to be concerned with, they're all sleeping in the shade because they're no dummies. So these guys are out hunting. They have a very short, coarse fur coat that, they'll, uh, that uh, helps them in the heat of the day. They also have the tear tracks. As you can see, from running from eyes to mouth, those are unique to the cheetah, the only cat that has them, and they cut the glare of the Serengeti sun. He has done a great job, hasn't he? Say goodbye to our very handsome boy. Now, uh, as I did mention, prey. In fact, you've probably seen red-tailed hawks soaring our local canyons in search of prey. Desiree, our red-tailed hawk is going to soar over your heads in search of the, uh, the, what she considers the prey in my gloved hand. If you would keep that in mind, it looks like you're all situated, so please remain seated. But turn around, focus your attention right behind you. I'd like you to be Desiree, our red-tailed hawk. Coming in nice and high. Good girl, Desiree. Add a girl. Now, a lot of people wonder when I talk about Desiree coming down to what she considers to be the prey, can she really see the food from all the way up there? She most certainly can. These birds have exceptional vision. In fact, that's probably one of the reasons for their, their wide success throughout all of North America. And it just so happens that I can show you how keen her eyesight is. Look up here on the hillside, way up here through the redwood trees, there's a large eucalyptus tree with the front page of our local newspaper attached to it. That tree is about 200 feet from where most of you are seated. If you are a red-tailed hawk, you'd be able to read that newspaper line for line. That's how keen your eyesight would be. A lot of you are still looking for the tree. <laughs> well, Desiree is an adult. 
She is about 14 years old, and she should be soaring over your heads for many more years to come. And that's going to wrap it up for Desiree, our very beautiful red-tailed hawk. Uh, Okay, we have to come out here and go down Cat Canyon, right over to here. Now, it's like, do, which way do we go? The way we came and the way we go back. You have a clue? This is where we are. We have to come down here, and which way do we go here? Rocket. Oh, no. please don't. Yeah. We don't want to do it. Dylan will push you out. Oh, cool. Don't rock it. That's right. Don't make it. Skin the rolls or else you're. I'm telling you, you can throw me in jail. amusement park jail. Yep. What the. We have to leave him here with the jail. That's probably like. That's probably like. Oh, 
Tasty. That is pretty. Look, Andrew. Mm, it's pretty. Yeah. See how far you can jump. But it says see if you can jump as far as a grasshopper, a ground hornbill, a frog, a rabbit, a wallaby, a spring block, or a tiger. 21 feet. Wow, where'd camera on? Right there. Wallaby. Oh, very important. Watch your hands. If you hit the stinking pig. You dirty hands. Think that turtle's ever gonna move? Sure, slow turtle. They swim a lot. They swim in the water. That's right. Look at Mason dive in for us. Oh, dog. I think they're all warm. They're going to stay up there. Right now. Small little areas where people's hands cannot get. So they'll send them into small areas um, and they're allowed to, they're able to do a lot more than people can do. They also use them. When Prince Charles and Lady Diana got married, they hooked a little harness on their back with TV wires, sent them under the road, trained them how to go from point A to point B. When they came out the other side, they were able to hook up those wires so that it was able, the wedding was able to be broadcasted all over the world. So they've been used for a lot of different things. Now he is a nocturnal predator, so he's going to be awake at night. And at the end, when you guys come up and get to see him, take a good whiff of him. Now Chris isn't wearing bad cologne. <laughs> That's actually hot. Diego, hey, okay. Was it a long trip for you today, Joseph? No, okay. <laughs> All right, Joseph, you, have you seen our show before? You have, okay. Have you ever been a volunteer in our show before? Okay. Well, you know what we're going to do? You and I are going to build a food chain. Now, a food chain is just how an animal makes its living out in the wild. What animals eat, and then what in turn eats those animals. And we're going to see if Joseph here can guess the animals on our food chain board. Now, Joseph, if you need any help, just look out there. Because if you guys get the answer before Joseph, you can help him by shouting that answer out in the spirit of friendly competition. And give Joseph a little helping hand there. Okay, Joseph, are you ready? Okay, well we're going to give you the first one. Now this is our habitat for today. You can also call it the animal's home. It's a grassy meadow, okay? So I want you to think of the grass, Joseph. A nice grassy meadow because our first animal is found in the grass. He's small and gray and furry. He has little bitty ears and a big long tail. A mouse. Good job, Joseph. The next animal likes to eat mice. This animal is long and skinny with no arms or legs. That's right, it is a snake. Uh-oh. Look out, Mr. Mouse, here comes Mr. Snake! Oh! All right, Joseph, you're doing a really good job. We've got one more animal up here at the top of the food chain for you. Now, this animal likes to eat snakes and mice. Although he doesn't live in the grass, he lives high above it, and he likes to hunt at night. An owl! Very good! All right, Joseph, this is how our food chain works today. Owls are up at the top, and they eat snakes. Then the snakes eat the mice, then the mice live in the grass. However, look what happens when we take away the grassy meadow. That's the most important part of the food chain, because without that, the mice don't have anything to eat. Then the snakes wouldn't have anything to eat, neither would the owls. And then, Joseph, what are we left with? Nothing. That's right. So it's important that we take care of animals, but we have to take care of the places that they live as well. You're going to have to learn how to take care of them. Hop up here, Jake. That's a boy. Take his seat right there. Now, if you don't have any fish in your freezer, that's okay. We'll send some home with you. Because Jake really, really, really likes to eat fish, right? Yeah, he does. <laughs> so step, whoops, two for the price of one. Joseph, step right up here next to me. You gotta learn how to feed him. Because remember, he really likes fish. <laughs> that was yes. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna give you a fish. And you're gonna toss it right up by his face, just like I'm doing. Real important. It's his fish. If you hang on to it, he'll come get it, and that would be bad, okay? <laughs> All right. Here you go, give it a toss. 
You were natural. Excellent. Do it again. And you get the idea. He could just keep doing this all day long. He's a regular bottomless pit. A youngster. Woo! That was winged it right up there. A youngster like Jake might eat 30 pounds in a single sitting. You are doing great. Joseph, do me a favor. If you want to really be a trainer, just wipe that hand off on your pants. That a boy. Good job. Now, you know how to feed him, and you know what he needs. Lots and lots of fish. Are your parents going to let you keep him? No, you don't think so? <laughs> you seem pretty clear about that. Well, that's a good thing, Joseph, because I'll tell you what. Carol and I were just playing with you a little bit. He didn't really win Jake to take him home. Sea lions make really lousy house pets. What you want is a chance to come out here and become his best friend, get to know him a little bit better, and you just did that, I tell you what, by giving him some fish. But now he wants to thank you. And the way he's going to do that is to give you a great big kiss. Okay. Now, if you're ever in a national park like ours, you never want to get quite this close to a wild animal. They can be unpredictable and dangerous, but good old Jake has been special deputized so that he can come out here and meet volunteers such as yourself every single day. And I'll tell you what, kissing is, nope, this one, this one, there you go, is his very favorite thing. He's going to send the audience a kiss first. Watch. Oh, nice one. And now he's going to give you one right on your cheek. Now, Joseph, before he kisses you, smell that hand you were feeding him with. Smell your hand? Pretty gross, huh? Oh, yeah, he even... <laughs> you don't want that on your lips, do you? Because <laughs> it stinks. Yeah, nope, there you go. It stinks. So have yourself look out at the audience, and that way he'll kiss you on the cheek. Now, Joseph, you can smile like you're having fun, and you can breathe. <laughs> Yeah, comfortable? That's quite a position you got him in there, Carol. Maybe you can stand on one leg. <laughs> Here comes a great big kiss! <laughs> Joseph, let's do that again. Hold still. If you don't hold still, we do it twice. Kiss. Oh. <laughs> You're a kissing fool. One more time. Kiss. That's it! Good job! And that's Jake and Joseph. Wow, Joseph! Galapagos Cordes. Skin, huh? That's his house.
You mean the one by the rock? Yeah. Big ones, huh? Because you watch the Discovery Channel doesn't mean anything. I can do it. I could wrestle these things. Yeah, tools! Mm -hmm. 